welcome back welcome back i'm going to be looking at the rotary encoder today and before i even go any further my video is not going to be nearly as in-depth as this young lady's video here so the name of the website is gurgle apps i believe gurgle apps.com i'm going to put the link of this direct website in the description this young lady is what i would describe as an expert level programmer already uh, very very good video very good description I've simply made use of herself just so I can collate everything in a single location, just so it's easier for people to follow. Let's now jump over to the rotary encoder. So here's my very, very messy circuit because I'm using one breadboard for multiple things. I'm going to push that aside for now. And this is what a rotary encoder looks like. So let's see if I can focus on this. All right, here we go. So as you can see, we have this turnable thing here. This goes around and around. It also has a switch which we can click. I didn't get the switch working properly, but I'll come back to that at a later date. And now here we have the labels, as you can see. We have CLK, we have DT, switch, plus, and ground. I'm gonna show or explain how to connect these using my circuit diagram. And this is it, simple rotary encoder. Now this is gonna be really good for like scrolling through menus or just trying to detect what option someone's trying to do. Um, there was one of the past papers, I believe it's the 2019 past paper, which had something to do with the turnstile. So you know those things that you go through when you're at, that, when you're at like a, a fun fair and you have to walk through the turnstile thing, you put a pound in and you go through. This would be really good for that. So we could say for every tick of the turnstile, we have a value increasing and that's how many people have gone through the turnstile throughout the entire day. Uh, let's say we had an area which we could only accommodate 100 people. So if we have 100 turns, of this thing here, of this um, rot rotary encoder, 100 turns of that would mean that 100 people have gone through and we can't accommodate anymore until we have less than 100 people. At the very top, I say information source. This is the YouTube video of that young lady who explained this entire process extremely well. I'm not even gonna try and explain it to be fair. I give credit where credit is due. She's amazing. Um, I simply have parts and justification next. The rotary encoder, why would you want to use it? Now, again, in the unit six exam, you have to be able to justify why you've decided to use that part. And in this case, I've chosen to use a rotary encoder, maybe because I wanted to have, you know, that turnstile thing I mentioned in the previous sections. I could have wanted to men uh, make a turnstile type thing. So after 100 people have entered a location, then I could say, okay, no more people can enter. Quite simple, right? That I could say block diagram, input, processing, output, just like before. The input is going to be for the rotor from the rotary encoder. The processing is going to come from the Raspberry Pi Pico. The output is going to be the shell or the screen. And then under my pseudocode, quite simply, I say start. I say repeat forever because this program needs to be run in an infinite loop or a loop that checks enough times. And I say input, get rotary value. And I say if rotary value left, then say the thing has turned left. If a rotary value right, then say the thing has turned right and end. But I, I put this in a repeat forever because I'm going to use an infinite loop for mine. That's the only reason. Here I have a flowchart, but I made a mistake in this flowchart. So let me go back to my PowerPoint itself and explain the mistake I made first. So I said, uh, start the program, get rotary value. Um, rotary left, just checking if the rotary thing has been turned left. If it's a yes, I say turn right or right turn. This is a mistake I made, quite a simple mistake, but I'm still going to show the mistakes as much as I can. Let me go back to my right, my correct one now. So I say start the program, get rotary value. Rot rotary left is a question. So if it's a yes, that means I should turn left or the, or the shell should show output left turn initiated, left turn or turn left, whatever it is, right? If it's a no, it should go down and do another check for rotary right. So if, you, if it's been a right turn, I simply turn right. I put right on my shell. Again, the shell is just a screen at the bottom where we see the Python output. So when I say print hello world, where it actually shows up at the very bottom of the screen, that's the shell. Um, if it's a no for rotary right, it could also be um, a switch. So the switch being pressed on the rotary encoder. And if the switch is pressed, then it should say switch pressed. And again, all three of these actions lead back to get rotary value because you're going to keep checking, keep checking, keep checking. And um, if the switch has not been pressed, the rotary did not go right and the rotary did not go left, then the program should end. Now, there are other ways to do this. I could say no and output an error message, but I'm going to skip that for now. 
me go back to my document now this is my circuit diagram here very very simple i'm not going to look at the circuit diagram right now because it's again very simple i'm going to go down to my pin connections instead and let me zoom in so i say uh, pin connections pin three from the pi pico goes to ground of the rotary encoder pin three is ground on the raspberry pi pico now again keep in mind you should always have your pin out sheet with you so i believe it's this one here you get this either printed by your teachers and given to you for the exam. Just make sure you have a copy of this. You should always be referring to this sheet here or this document here. Then I say pin 40 of the Pico goes to VCC of the rotary encoder. Pin 1, so GP0 from the Pi Pico goes to DT of the rotary encoder. Pin 2, which is GP2, goes to... Um, sorry, this should be GP1. Huh? See, made a mistake there again. Should be GP1. Um, from the Pi Pico goes to the CLK of the rotary encoder and pin 4 which should be GP2 from the Pi Pico goes to switch or SW of the rotary encoder and that's how I connect it now this isn't connected to loads of other devices and it's not a full system but the main purpose is to show you how to get input into the Raspberry Pi and how to have the Raspberry Pi process that and then you can do whatever you want with the output because what I could have done here is maybe added three LEDs right one LED would be for a left turn, maybe a blue one. One would be for a right turn, maybe a green one. And maybe an orange one could be for when the switch is pressed. And then that would be a visual aid to someone using the system so that they know what's going on. But we could always add that extra stuff later on. So that's all I would do for that. The code I'm using for this, I'm going to, this is a link to that young lady's website. Again, it's called Gurgle Apps. I'm going to put that in the description. So please go have a look at it. I will provide it on my website as well, but it's obviously from her website. It's not my code. The only thing I've done is I've added a few comments to what she's given. That's it. I don't want you to focus on anything else, but that device right there, the rotary encoder. I'm going to press F5 on my keyboard now to run this code. And what should happen is when I turn it to the right, to that direction, it should increase the count by one. It should also say something on my screen. When I go to the left, it should do something similar, but say left. The click doesn't work, but we're going to ignore the click for now. So I'm going to turn it to the right. And as you can see, it said turned right. I'm going to turn it to the left. Okay, it's a bit tricky from this angle. There we go. Turn left, turn right, turn left. There we go. Rotary encoder working. Sorry about the shaky hands. I don't have my tripod today again, but I really wanted to get this recorded and out. So turn right, turn left, turn right. As we can see, it works perfectly fine. Now that value called count that's currently at two is gonna keep increasing when I go up, keep increasing so that I can then work out roughly how many people have entered. So if I'm using the turnstile example in the 2019 past paper, I can then work out how many people have entered this room, this door or this space, and then I can do something based on that. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful. Please go support that young lady's YouTube channel and her website, she is amazing. Peace.